continuous join as you go is a method that changed my life. Um, I discovered a blog post by Cypress Textiles a few years ago now, and she had a little photo tutorial for how to do a continuous join as you go. And it blew my tiny mind. And this is now the only way I join blankets. It's great. You can make all your motifs. This works for hexagons and anything where all the motifs are the same. You can apply this technique to hexagon circles when you're turning them into squares, all sorts. So you start, the theory is you start joining your yarn. I'm going to be using, see if I can say this right, Shapier's Soft Fun for this. It's what I've made all the little squares out of as well. It's actually really gorgeous. <laughs> very soft and squishy. Um, I'll put in the description box below a list of the colours I have used and obviously a link to where you can get it from. And um, yeah, so you join here at the bottom corner of your very first square and you join up, you come along, all on, hang on, let me spread these out a bit better so you can see, see if I can get them all still to stay in shot. So you join down here and you come along and you're staying on the yellow, and you join it to the grey. You come along, and you join it to this yellow. And then, on the next return row, you pick up all these three, and you go around them, and then you pick up all the next ones, and then you go around them, and you keep doing that for as big as your blanket, and then when you reach the top corner over here, you come back down this side, and then you come, oh, you can't see, along here, join here. Now that sounds complicated, um, I'm going to pop in a little diagram um, here, which also looks very complicated. It's not, I promise, once you get your head around the going around, pick up the next row, going around, pick up the next row. It's easy. Once you've done it, you will just, hopefully you'll have your, your minds blown like I did too. So enough waffle. Let's begin joining continuously as we go. Just one strand of yarn. That's it. It's amazing. So I've got my squares, as you saw in the introduction, laid out in the way I'm going to join them. So I'm just going to keep them over here so I know exactly which square comes next. And I'm going to start with the bottom three right down here. So using my soft fun, also can I just say a little heads up to the uh, easy start, you can find the middle. <gasps> oh, it's genius. It's genius. I'm just going to snip off, I could just pull it off, I'm just going to snip off the end here and I'm going to go ahead and join it to the bottom corner of my first square. So I'm joining to here. So I'm just going to pick this one up, attach my yarn. So like I said before, this works for most you can figure out once you've got it down how to join most shapes um, I'm not gonna bother talking you through this round and what I'm doing because obviously it's just a standard granny round is how I'm joining I am going to chain one in between my um, thank you Steve I'm gonna chain one in between my double crochet clusters here just because that makes my life a little easier for the joining. However, use whatever method you want and you just want to be crocheting up the side, I'm trying to go as quickly as I can. If I go too fast at any point, feel free to pause the video and just catch up to where I am. I'm literally racing ahead so that this video doesn't end up being three hours long. I'm trying to make it as quick as possible so you can get the gist of what I'm doing. I've reached my first corner. Also, um, sorry, little note right back here. I just, I didn't do a full corner in this bottom corner. You can, but I tend not to. So I just started straight off with three double crochets. So Steve is distracting me with her shouting, but start with three double crochets. So leave that very first corner unfinished. Like that. 
It's not the end of the world if you're crocheting along with me and you've done a corner. It doesn't matter. We can just end it here. But this is just how I like to do it. So I'm on to my first full corner here. I'm just going to carry on and do this side. I hope you can see from this how nice and squishy the soft fun is. It's really lovely to work with. some slack here. Okay, I'm on to my second corner. So I'm just going to whiz round. Right, now I'm onto my third corner here, fourth corner actually, sorry, from where we started, but again, I'm not going to complete this corner. I'm just going to do the first three trebles. So you want to stop at this point. So I've gone up to here, round, and I'm stopping here. So I haven't completed the corner. This is the bit where we're now going to start joining. So you leave all these undone. Sorry, excuse me, I've got a bit of a throg in my throat. So <clears throat> you want to be leaving this like this with this bizarre raw edge. Don't worry, we'll come back to this one. And now we're going to be joining, just move those, to this grey one here. So I've been chaining three in my corners. Um, you chain however many you normally chain, two, four, whatever it is you want to do. You just do that, but I've been doing chain three on the corners. So I'm going to chain three, but instead of working back into this corner, I'm gonna work straight into this corner here. I'm gonna put three trebles, tre doubles, straight into this corner. like so. So I've just worked three doubles straight into this corner and I'm going to leave the, the rest of that undone and I'm going to slip stitch straight into this space here. So you can see it's now joined here. So you're going to have this little loop, don't worry about that. Again we'll come back to that one. And you're going to go ahead and put your double crochets in here, slip stitch to join, double crochets, slip stitch to join. And I'll meet you back at this corner. Don't finish this corner until you're where I am or you've caught up. So I'm just going to whiz up this side. Slip stitching with every chain space here. Hopefully, even if I'm not explaining it very well, getting the visual of what I'm doing will help if the diagram or photo tutorials have confused you. If there's anything that I'm whizzing over too quickly or not explaining correctly, feel free to shout in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, right, so I'm at my first true corner here. I've done my first three doubles for it. Now, if this was just a normal join as you go, 
we'd be joining to this one, but you're not. You want to leave these top corners. Just leave them hanging free. We'll come back to those. Just leave them for now. So just chain three and finish off your corner. So you can see I've not joined them. So you've got odd raw edges left along here, which looks a bit confusing. You've got uncompleted corners here, which also looks confusing. And you're going to leave these, leave these unattached. So go ahead and you're going to crochet along to here, down to here, and I will meet you back here. But remember, do not finish off the corner. Just pop three doubles over here. Okay, so I'm just finishing off the three doubles, my bottom corner here. Turn it around so you can see. So just like before, and for any other squares that you're joining, you're not going to finish off this bottom corner. You're going to chain three, or again, however many it is you're chaining, and you're going to go straight into this bottom corner here. Just three doubles. Don't complete the corner. Just three doubles straight in here. And then slip stitch to join. And again, just like here, when we get back up to this corner, you're not going to attach it. So you slip stitch the sides after each set of three doubles, but not the corners. So I'm just going to go up here, and because this is my last square, I want you to stop over here. So you carry on doing that for as many blankets, squares across, so you just keep going round, round, remember to leave the bottom edge unfinished and these corners unfinished. And when you get to the very last one, you only work two sides of it. So I'm just going to come up here. Hopefully you're still with me and I've not confused you wildly. It all starts to make sense, I promise. So again, leave your corners unjoined when you get to the, these top sections, which will be within the body of your blanket. So I'm not joining them, I'm leaving them hanging loose. And because this is my final square, I'm only working two sides. So I'm gonna stop here, and I'm gonna stop on just three doubles. So I'm not gonna complete that corner. So I'm on my little outer edge here, and I'm just going to put three doubles, because this is the very last square in the width of my blanket. So your first row will look like this. Starting over here, you can always see a little tail for where you started, and you just go up, round, down, and across. Up, round, down, and across. Let's do that the full length, and then when you get to your very last square, just end on three doubles, so you're going to have two unworked sides alongside this sort of raw bottom edge. And now you're going to bring in the next three. So we're now going to join the next three squares straight to this. Now I rotate my work a lot as I go, which you'll find you do, but I will keep putting it back down so you can see exactly what I've done so you're not getting confused with where I'm turning my work. So to join the next three squares, you're going to chain three and you're going to pop three double crochets straight into this bottom corner of this square here. So I'm putting three doubles straight into here. 
I'm just going to turn slightly so it's easier for me to work. So keep my eye on that bottom corner here. Like so. And then I'm just going to go ahead and turn everything because it's a bit easier for me to work with. And then you're going to slip stitch straight into here. So I'm going to pop three double crochets. Slip stitch, just like before. Just work along the sides. This works for really big squares too, so however many little side sections you've got until you reach the corner. And this is where we're now going to sort out these loose hanging corners and row blows. If I turn it back around, you can see where how I'm joining them. I'm just keep turning my work just so it's easy for me to work on really. So we've reached the first corner. We've got these two hanging free. So I want you to do just three doubles. And ignore, ignore this first one. You're going to be going straight into the diagonal. So all along this row, when we're picking up along one edge, you're just gonna go always join to the opposite diagonal corner. So you're gonna chain one, slip stitch, chain one. Now stop. You're not working back into this one anymore. You're bringing in the second square that you are joining. Steve is getting crosser and crosser. Steve, what? If she keeps shouting, I will let her out. So you've joined, now we're going straight into this one. So we're only picking up the bottom edge. So working straight into, let me turn it back again so you can see where I'm at. Working straight into this bottom corner here. Three doubles, just three doubles. And same as on this, slip stitch, work your sides, joining with a slip stitch. Do that the full width till you get to the, your next corner. So I'm right at my corner, three doubles, because we're still working within the sort of body of the blanket and we've still got these loose corners. Again, you're going to go to the diagonal, not to this one, this one. So chain one, slip stitch into this diagonal corner, chain one. You'll have these loose ones, don't worry about those, we pick them up in a bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and join what is now my final square on this row. So you keep going, joining like that, picking up the opposite corner all the way along until you reach your very final square. So you're just going to, same as before, three doubles. And then slip stitch along. Slip stitch, doubles, slip stitch. Just as before. And now I'm at 
the final corner on the final, so if I rotate it round, you can see. I'm right over here by the final corner now. So we're not going to leave this corner because this will be the outside edge of your blanket. We're not going to leave it unworked like we have the middle ones. You're going to, because it's the outside edge, chain one, slip stitch into this corner. A little lonely corner on its own. Join it to its friend, chain one. And then you're going to work your granny square round just as you normally would. And I will meet you back at this point. Right, so I'm nearly back to my half finished corner here. So I'm just popping in my three doubles, my chain one. So this is now the bit where we pick up this loose corner here. So I'm just turning it this way so you can see it's like this at the moment. This is where we started over, over here, my tail. This is always a good tell as to where you started and how your layout should be, especially if you then want to join in your next three and you're not quite sure which way they go. It's quite a good way of measuring up. So you can see where you're at. Oops. So how you tackle this corner and picking up this little edge. So you're gonna, you've already got three doubles there. So you're just gonna pop in three more doubles to complete the corner. I'm just gonna pop three doubles in. And you're going to chain one, give yourself a bit of slack and take your hook out. Then you're gonna put your hook into this corner here. And it is your choice whether you go under sorry over or under to pick this up totally your choice but whichever way you do it make sure you do it the same throughout your whole blanket and then you'll have the same i personally i don't know why but i like to go under some people like to go over your call cool. but i'm going to go under so can you see i've put my hook in here i'm just going under this join here and then i'm going to pop this loop back on my hook Pop it tight again and I'm going to bring my hook through to here and I'm going to chain two. I already chained one, so I'm going to chain two. And that is that joined to there. And now you're going to work three doubles straight into here to finish off this corner. So I'll show you again a little bit close up just in case. Let me just undo one two chains I did, which brings me back to here. So I'm putting my hook under here, under here, picking that loop back up, back on my hook, and I'm just bringing this, so it's out this side here. My yarn's back here, and I'm just gonna pick it up, and just chain one, two. And then you finish off this corner here with another three doubles. Slip stitch it. That one you've just worked. And you can see how now you have joined this whole corner section here. So you, on the way, this way, you pick up the opposite corner. It's always the opposite corner. But like I say, you can go under or you can go over. Totally up to you. I just personally go under. I'm not really sure why. And then out the other side. Look, I don't know if that's picking up very well. But you can see you have these nice little almost like circles joining in the middle. So carry on as before. Now, just like on this row, leave your corners hanging free because you've got another row to add. And again, we'll pick up the opposite corners as you come along. So leave these hanging free and just keep going around and I will meet you back here to show you one more time how you join that opposite corner. So feel free to pause the video and I'll meet you back back here. I'm back to my final corner here. 
So again, I'm going to pop three double crochet in. One, two, three. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to come into this opposite corner, put my hook underneath there and underneath there. Put that loop back on my hook. Pull it all through. Chain two. Three double crochet into the next little corner on the opposite. On the sort of next square to finish it off. And then keep going round. Now, <clears throat> as I keep saying for your blanket, you'll be just repeating this little section. You'll notice as you go, you have one side from the side that you started, my little tail, side you started, you'll be attaching. So you'll have one finished sort of edge and you will have two raw edges. That's supposed to be like that, don't panic. <laughs> so you're sort of finishing off one side as you go and then at the end we'll come around and pick up these. So because I'm on my last square, just like before, I'm going to stop at this point here. So leave this side unworked, on the unworked side. Bringing in your next row, we're going to do exactly the same as we did before. So you've stopped over here with your sort of half completed section. You're going to chain three, join to this bottom corner here and join here and remember you just join into the opposite corner. So this is where you just join the bottom edges. So I'm going to turn everything around. It's just easier for me to work that way, especially when looking through a camera lens. I'm going to go ahead and chain three and start attaching what will be my final row of squares. Obviously, you just continue this process for the full body of your blanket. <clears throat> and you're just picking up the bottom edge. I'm over to my corner, we just three doubles. So I've done this bottom edge only, chain one, join to the opposite corner. Just a simple chain one, chain one again. Sorry, join with a slip stitch, not chain one. By now, you know what you're doing. And then you're gonna come straight into your next one here. Straight into this corner, three double crochet. So keep doing that all the way along with all your squares or circles or hexagons or whatever shape it is you're using and I will meet you when I'm over here on my pale yellow square. So I've reached the end of my bottom row picking up joining and because this is my outside edge that we joined to before rather than the raw edge for this corner again I'm going to join just a slip stitch like so and carry on round just as before if I turn it back round right to how it was originally you can see how we have gone in this pattern here. Pick them all back up and worked around again. Pick them all back up. So now we're going to work around again. Now because this is my final row of granny squares which I'm joining on my imaginary blanket or my tiny blanket I'm going to carry on but I will meet you 
back down here where we do I'll show you that joining one more time because I know there's a lot of information in this video so I'll meet you back down here and then I'll just give you a quick word about because it's the final edge how we join these because we're not going to be leaving any more flappy bits so I'm going to crochet around I'll meet you back here so I'm on my little corner here I'm just going to finish off with three doubles and just like before chain one into that to pick up that corner come back through chain two carry on now as I said a minute or so ago this is your or my final row so this is where we are going to stop leaving things flapping around everything is going to get joined up to everything so bear with me whilst I just get to the top here so any flappy bits are all in the middle body of your blanket where you can pick them back up again the minute you're on like your last row no more flapping around so here at this corner I'm just going to finish this one off with three double crochets. Chain one. Like I said, it's the outside edge of your blanket now. No more flapping around. You're going to join it like you do on this side here. You're going to just join with a slip stitch, chain one, and then carry on. So you're joining here now as well as picking up any flappy corners so you keep going crochet along here here pick up that flappy corner come back up here join it and I will meet you at this top corner over here so I am approaching the top corner of my final square now before you carry on you might want to just double check everything is joined you haven't missed anything you haven't got any like flapping corners around because now's the time if you've missed any of these joins to go back especially if you're on working on a large blanket but if everything is secure good you're ready to go so we're up at this we've got one join side you've joined along the top and we're left with two raw edges and these uncompleted corner sections along here so this is the nice sort of easiest quickest bit so you're at the top corner complete your corner as just as normal really so I'm a three double crochet chain three three double crochet kind of a girl but whatever method you have been using is fine. So now we're coming along to, if I've turned it around, our unfinished edges. So these little external bits have a little nifty way of being picked up. It's super simple. I'm just going to quickly whiz along that point okay so three double crochet into this unfinished corner raw sort of corner here chain one slip stitch into this chain three where you join them when you move up a row just a straight slip stitch into there, chain one, three double crochets into the next half finished corner. So you've now picked it up. So it looks like these. And you're going to do that all the way along 
So when you get to these half finished corners, three double crochet, chain one, slip stitch to this chain space, chain one, three double crochet. Do that and finish your all the way along down the side, and then along the bottom, and I will meet you back where we started. Okie dokie, so I am right at the very end of all this joining, right back where we started. Now I know I was a bit slow in the beginning to tell you to just put three double crochets, so if you have already finished this corner cluster, or if you started with it, you can just slip stitch to join, but I didn't, I didn't finish off this corner. See, this is right where we started. So I'm gonna chain three, join to my very first chain three. And that's it, you are done. Everything is joined, solid, and look, you only have a starting tail and if you were to cut your yarn now this that's it and they're both in the same bit tell me this method is not insanely magical it's incredibly initially difficult to get your head around however the minute you get going it's so simple I find the biggest sort of tip for this is when you lay out, especially if you're doing a big blanket, when you're playing with the layout of your sort of how you want your final colorways to be. Obviously, that doesn't apply if all your granny squares are the same size, but like mine, they're all different. I like to lay them all out and then take a photograph so that if I ever am halfway through joining and the cat has wandered over the squares or I've kicked the pile by mistake, or obviously we don't all have the luxury of being able to leave crochet out across the carpet. Um, you've just got a record of which square comes next. So I hope that has helped. It is the single biggest question I get asked because I often show photos where I am doing the continuous join as you go. I really hope that helped. I have a video on how to, now you've got all your squares joined, how to keep your blanket how to keep the border from ruffling. So what to do next. Basically I've got a just an option for you of, as to how I will then go on. So that's it really. If you now want to go on and, and watch, or if you haven't already watched the How to Keep It Flat at this stage, I'll pop a link here-ish. I've never quite got the hang of where to point. There should be a link there to watch that video. And like I said, I hope that helps you and I hope this changes your life too. <laughs> Happy crocheting!